Thank you very much, Byron. Mark Zuckerman from MassInSports.com joins me now. We're going to talk a little end-of-season awards. We've still got a handful of weeks left in the season, but let's have some fun here and look ahead a little bit. Mark, there are three categories, the major three awards, that it looks like Nationals players slash managers might be in contention for. Let's start with the hitting side of things and the potential MVP in the National League. Daniel Murphy, certainly a candidate. How do you think he stacks up in that possible category? Yeah, well, first, the caveat here is there's about 53 games left, so a lot can change. Sure. But if you're voting right now, Daniel Murphy's right there in the mix of it, in the middle of it, with, you know, maybe Rizzo and Bryant from the Cubs, but they could cancel each other out. Uh, a lot of times, you know, not one is really standing out above the other. I think the question with Murphy is going to be, do voters take into account defense and how much or not do they? I think those of us who've watched them all year have thought defense has not really been an issue. There's Far no, better than advertised. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the advanced stats, the war is not going to be up there compared to maybe some of the other guys, and maybe that'll hurt him. But what he's done for this team, there's no question how valuable he's been for them. And if he ends up hitting 350 with 30-plus homers, 120 RBIs, you're talking about numbers that few of any second baseman have ever put together. So I think right now I put him at the top, but it's going to be an interesting discussion there, I think, when it comes down to it. To me, if it was just the average and maybe moderate power numbers, it'd be a different story. But Daniel Murphy is up there, you know, in power categories as well. His slugging percentage, his runs driven in over 80 at this point in the season. I, I'm with you. I think at this point in the season, he has to be the leader uh, for the NL MVP. Let's switch over to the pitching side of things. Steven Strasburg with the 15 wins. You would think uh, seriously in the mix for Cy Young. How do you see that kind of shaking out with maybe Max Scherzer kind of sneaking into that conversation as well? Yeah, Max has definitely put himself uh, more into that conversation here lately with how he's pitched. Now, this is going to be one of those great classic old school, new school arguments because if Strasburg's biggest argument is going to be on his wins, that's something a lot of people don't look at quite the same way as maybe they used to. Now, that said, you get to a level where you're beyond 20, 22, 23, where in theory he could Tough get to there. ignore that. Exactly. So that's the kind of thing that does stand out even to the new school voters. I think they have to acknowledge that. Now, what also helps Strasburg's case is Clayton Kershaw's injury. There was a point that he was going to be the runaway winner, maybe even the MVP, as well as he had pitched. But we don't know if, when or if he's coming back. Uh, you've seen Jake Arrieta fall off considerably here lately. So I think the other contenders are talking Johnny Cueto, who's been very good for the Giants. Madison Bumgarner has been very good for them as well. But right now, if you took, take the whole package and look at the wins, the strikeouts, the innings that he's giving, when you put that all together, Strasburg's going to have a really strong case. And if he gets to, let's say, for example, 22 and 3, something like that, at the end of the season with an ERA in the mid to low twos, again, that's going to be a tough one to say no on. And another factor here you mentioned for the MVP side of things with uh, Rizzo and Bryant potentially pulling votes away from each other, you have to consider if Max keeps this level up and maybe Steven doesn't get to that 22 23 win mark, kind of hover somewhere around 19 or 20, they might pull some votes away from each other. We'll have to monitor that as well. Now, Dusty Baker um, obviously would be in the mix for the managerial side of things, the manager of the year candidate or uh, category in, in the National League. There are some other possibilities there. Maybe you have to look at Don Mattingly. If, if the Marlins end up making the playoffs, how do you uh, see Dusty's chances of being? Yeah, this is always the hardest one because what really makes a great manager? And too often, I think they give this award to essentially the team that outperforms their expectations, whether that's a true reflection of the manager or not. And so because of that, you mentioned Don Mattingly. If he got the Marlins into the playoffs, I think that would probably carry a lot of weight with voters. That's not to say that he's necessarily done the best job. You can't argue what Dusty Baker has done with this team this year, taking over the situation as it ended last year, installing this kind of new vibe around here. And let's be honest, yes, there's a lot of talent here, but he's also dealt with a lineup that is basically without Bryce Harper for uh, since May given his struggles without Ryan Zimmerman. Uh, you know, a team that has not totally clicked, I think everyone would admit. And he's kept this together and kept this group together. So I think it's going to be a strong case for him. Joe Madden, yes, the Cubs were supposed to be really, really good. But he's obviously done a good job and infused his personality in there. So these are always the tough ones. I think if the Marlins squeak into the playoffs, you probably you make Maddenly the front runner. But Dusty's certainly going to get votes. A lot of speculation, but fun speculation. Mark, thanks for the time as always. Thank you, Dan. Byron, back to you.